Hi, this is Claire Pratia, and welcome to another Hero Arts video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own shaker elements for a shaker card, and also how to do some layered heat embossing. So to get started, I'm taking a piece of gold cardstock, and I'm die cutting it using a rectangle infinity die. I think this is the third largest infinity die. So with that die cut, I'm going to set the frame aside, and then I'm going to create my shaker elements using the rectangle from that. So whenever I'm making a shaker card and I'm making my own shaker elements, what I keep in mind is the back of the cardstock and what kind of look I want for the card. So for this card, I want it to be all gold. So I already have gold on one side of my cardstock and I need to get gold on the other side. So that's why I'm doing my heat embossing. The reason I'm paying attention to both sides is because when you shake the card, the elements are gonna be flipping around. So if I don't do my heat embossing here, when I shake the card, you're going to see little bits of white in there with all the gold. It would just look kind of weird to me. So that's why I'm doing this whole extra little step here. After I have this heat embossed, I'm not going to directly go into die cutting it just because I think that it tends to kind of gum up my dies a little bit. So I like to wait on that and just give it some time to kind of cool down. So now we're going to move on to another large panel of heat embossing. It's a piece of black cardstock which I'm covering with some black sparkle embossing powder and I'm going to let that dry too because I'm going to be doing some heat embossing on it later. So with my gold panel heat embossed and cooled down, I die cut it using the party confetti die and I'm just going to poke out all those little elements. It takes a little bit of time but you know it's kind of one of those rare things that I decide is worth my time to kind of be picky about. So with all those elements uh, poked out, <laughs> and you also are left with this nice little panel, which is kind of cool. Um, you can use that for a different card. Um, we're going to move on to the second layer of heat embossing on that black sparkle panel that we made. So I'm going to arrange my sentiments from the Happy New Year stamp and cut stamp set and die set. <laughs> and it, it just takes me a while on camera to line everything up. But once I have that lined up, before I actually ink it up with Versamark and stamp it onto my black panel, I'm going to just cream this black cardstock with anti-static embossing powder. Because embossing powder likes to stick wherever it can, but in particular situations even more so. So when you have a large area covered with embossing powder, when you're adding another layer on, it's really going to want to stick anywhere it can, any little nooks and crevices. So that's why I just really cover my panel with anti-static powder. If you don't have any anti-static powder, you can always use cornstarch. That works just as well. So um, once I have the sentiment stamped and I add my gold powder to it, I didn't heat emboss it right away just because um, I thought I could get away with not heat embossing it right away. I wanted to be able to tell where it was, so I added all my other fireworks images. And now for the actual heat embossing. So Right now I'm doing this at real time. You'll notice the gun, I'm kind of, I'm not staying in one spot. I'm being kind of jittery. When you're doing heat embossing upon a layer that's already been heat embossed, you need to be extra careful so that you don't overheat the bottom layer of embossing. So I find that being kind of jittery and not staying in one place for too long helps prevent any um, kind of burning and scalding of the bottom layer of heat embossing. Also, I don't get super close to it. I mean, you try not to get too close to embossing when you're heat embossing anyway, but I particularly kind of keep my distance when I'm doing a heat embossing layering. So once we have our panel all ready to go, I'm just going to add some gems onto those fireworks and then I'm going to adhere my black cardstock onto a card base. I don't really like writing inside of black card bases. Um, mostly because I'm too lazy to find my white gel pen, so I just used a white card base. So when I have that ready, we are going to now make the pocket for our shaker card. So the first thing we need to do is add the acetate onto our previously die cut frame. And I find the, that the best adhesive for acetate is score tape, but I don't usually use score tape just because it's an extra step for me because you can't just take the lining off. You have to press it down. Otherwise, the adhesive is really obnoxious. Um, so even though it's a really strong adhesive, I just don't like to use it too often because I'm lazy. Um, but something that kind of helps keep 
make the uh, lining a little easier to peel off is using a bone folder, or in my case, a plastic folder. Some kind of pressure to really make the adhesive stick down to the, the cardstock. Now, for acetate, what you could do is you could just adhere it directly down to the frame if it's not cut to size, and then just cut it down using the scissors. But I decided to just die cut the frame using uh, one of the infinity dies that was slightly larger than the one I used to create the opening. So once I have that pocket created, I'm now going to add some foam adhesive to create the dimension to give that those little shaker elements some room to shake. <laughs> and remove the lining. I got my shaker elements in there. And then just adhere that down. I didn't press down super firmly in case anything got stuck. I kind of rearranged that big little streamer there. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that makes the card. I wanted to show you real quickly that if you don't want to bother with the whole shaker element, then you can just do the bottom layer, and that also looks kind of cool too. So if you have any questions, then you may leave them on the Hero Arts blog or on the YouTube comment section. I will try to respond, and supplies will be listed on the Hero Arts blog. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. God bless. Bye.